Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of Ask Carl, where you guys can ask me anything. Well, not anything. I'm not going to answer everything. But got a great response. Um, the first day, I got over 200 emails with questions. So obviously, I can't answer all those, but a lot of you guys ask the same thing. So hopefully, your question will get answered, even if it's not the specific one you wanted. Uh, but we'll be doing a lot of this, so just I keep sending them. I'm only answering the ones that were sent through the website, like a, like a, if you, the Ask Carl link on the website, which sends an email and lets me organize it better. I know you guys asked a lot of comments in the YouTube. Um, there's no way of controlling, of, of monitoring that, so I can't really um, kind of get the questions from there. So send them through the email, and maybe I'll get you next time. All right, so let's start. We've got a bunch of them here. I mean, I got about 40 questions here I picked out. So. Let's take a look at them. So we have one from Anton. Do you think any form of rock could become mainstream or that a rock band could even break into the mainstream in the future? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. But, you know, it, the thing is, is the way the industry is now, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be selling a million albums to make a good living at it because a lot of it's kind of self-published stuff anyway for the new band. So um, what I would say is don't worry about it. You know, if it's not, if it doesn't happen, if we have to listen to like pop and uh, all that stuff and mainstream, find what you like. There's gonna be plenty of bands still doing it um, and uh, support them. Just support them all you can, buy their stuff and you'll be good to go. Um, and there will be a future for that, that type of music. Um, so it'll always be developed. You know, and when a band breaks big anyway, then the next 10 years we've got to deal with knockoff bands of that great band. So, you know, sometimes it's better just to, <laughs> It not to happen at all. Tristan, where did you learn to play guitar or did you teach yourself? Uh, your videos are fantastic. No other guitar channel could beat yours. Thank you, Tristan. But um, um, I learned from a lot of different, so I had a lot of teachers as a kid. I wasn't self-taught. I had a, just a slew of teachers um, from jazz teachers to rock teachers to classical guitar stuff. I went to a conservatory for a short period of time when I was a teenager. Um, for classical guitar, but didn't stick with it. Um, got a little homesick, I think. Uh, came back and just started doing. I got really heavy into classical again as I got out to LA. Moved out to LA with a band, um, um, but quickly kind of dropped that because I got into classical music really heavy and uh, started uh, working with some great uh, classical guitar instructors um, from you know. Uh, Stephen Thatchuk, who I still study with, uh, Scott Tennant, Aaron Shearer, the late Aaron Shearer. Um, so some, some some really great guys, and I also study composition as well. So um, a lot of it is home study. I don't have it through school, but I do study with like great professors, but privately. I don't. I'm not much of a school guy. I don't like waking up early and, and, and having to be on a, somebody else's schedule. Who's your favorite guitarist? Depends. Uh, that's from Rayhan. I'm not. I'm gonna mess up a lot of these names because a lot of these people are all over the world. So, uh, I don't really have one. I would say the one that motivated me the most when I was a kid was Steve I. He's the one that made me. He's the first guitar player that made me just want to be as great as I possibly could be. So, possibly him. How many guitars do you have, and which is your favorite? That's from Harry. Um, I, I have about 13 or 14 guitars, but I only play my favorite would be either my Fritz Mueller classical guitar or uh, my, my Eric Johnson Strat. The Eric Johnson Strat has been my main electric guitar for about 10 years now. And uh, the Fritz Mueller I've had uh, almost two years. So those are the ones I spend the most time with. If I play electric, I play the Eric Johnson. If I play the uh, classical, I'm playing the Fritz Mueller. I have all the ones that I use basically just for the videos. Um, I have ones that Companies like Fret Light, they've I've done a lot of work for them, so they've sent me like five. I've got about five Fret Light guitars, so when I do videos for them, I'll use those. Um, so it's kind of just they all fit their purpose. I have one sentimental guitar, which is an Ingve Malmsteen Strat that I used to play a lot back in the '90s, but uh, I don't really play it now because I don't do the scallops anymore. But uh, I bought it back from a friend of mine, and I wanted it because my dog that passed away actually took a chip out of it. So it's sentimental to me, so I wanted the guitar back for that little paint shit being missing. <laughs> Nick, was I was just wondering what kind of music you like to listen to. What are some of your favorite bands? Um, I listen to a lot of classical music these days, but I do uh, listen to a bunch of, uh, um, my favorite band of all time is a band called Sigur Ross. I don't know if you guys know them. They're kind of an ambient post-rock band. They have been my favorite band for over 15 years. They're from Iceland. 
Um, this is my favorite band of all time. Uh, but you know, I still like listening to the classics too. If I listen to rock music, it would be like the Beatles. I love Pink Floyd. Um, I love Depeche Mode. So the, the, those bands like that, and obviously the metal, Metallica, they just released a great album. So um, there's a lot of cool stuff to listen to. Anything by Devin Townsend, I love. Jacob, I've always played on nylon strings, so when I play on steel strings, I can't hold them down, and my fingers can't adjust to the tighter space. It's the same with electric. Do you have some advice? I want to buy a steel string soon, or just want some advice so I can play as good on that one as I do on the nylon string. I understand your plight because I spend most of my day playing nylon string. Um, it's a different, totally different string tension and it's, all, uh, it's a totally different string spacing. Um, for acoustic guitar, I actually prefer the sound of a nylon string, uh, but I would say if you have proper technique, um, the number one thing about switching to a, a guitar with a higher string tension, you, your technique should be able to you know, let you hold the strings down better than you. The string spacing is just an adjustment. You have to just play on that guitar long enough. It's not something that they're going to feel completely different. Um, I have the same thing, like I can finger pick a lot of stuff, but then I have to finger pick it on a steel string or an electric. It takes me some time to get it down because it's just the string spacing is so much smaller to me. Um, but it's more the calluses. If you can get a strong callus together, the harder skin itself holds the string down more firmly than soft skin. It doesn't give away as much. So building up calluses is going to help you play on a steel string better. Um, and you can, there's little devices they have that you can do that all day. Charlie asked, what's your favorite acoustic guitar songs? Well, if it's not a classical guitar, if it's like a regular, like, you know, popular, famous song, I'd probably say like the Rain song. I love that. It's a, it's a great song. Uh, by Led Zeppelin. Isaac asks, thoughts on Muse? I love Muse. I think they're incredibly creative and Matthew Bellamy is just amazing. The reason, I, I mean, I do a lot of some Muse, but I wish I could do more, but a lot of their music is not as guitar based as it used to be. Um, so there's still some great guitar stuff in there, but you know, he's such a multi-instrumentalist and can, seems to be able to do anything. Um, he spends a lot of time on the keys and stuff. And so unless I'm doing like an arrangement, sometimes I know they have some, some heavier stuff, but, um, it's something that I, you know, I haven't kind of followed. So I kind of just listen to the request and if they come in, uh, I'll check it out. And if I can make something happen with it, I'll do it. Daniel asked, how did you practice playing so quickly? Um, when I was a kid, I practiced, obviously I liked, I, I liked a lot of the players that could play fast, Steve I, Yngwie, whatever. Um, um, but as I got older, and especially started getting into other forms like classical guitar, um, speed burst, I think, are the number one things that can really develop speed and do it while keeping your technique accurate. So I, if you check on this channel, just do a search on my videos for speed burst, breaking your speed barrier, I think is one of the name of it. That kind of shows you how I practice and get things up to speed. Jack asks, uh, do you have any tips to help play more melodic style guitar? Um, I think the best to be better play more melodic style is, you know, we have our parts on a guitar where we play licks. Most guitar improvisation for most players, and this just the way it's always going to be, is it's pattern based. It's, there's, you're playing licks that you play, even if it's something that's a billion miles all over the place, uh, an Ingve riff that just goes all the way down. He's playing patterns or licks that he's played many times, and he's just kind of stringing them together. It doesn't mean he's completely hearing all those notes separately and, and improvising like that. It doesn't happen. But getting your ear connected for when you're doing slower melodic playing, um, building solos, is ear training can really help you because we can, you can take, that's what my ear training course that I'm now really trying to push and put more material in on the, on the website, in the premium section of my website, teaches you how to ear train, uh, ear training, but from a guitarist perspective. So when you hear a melody in your head, you can play the melody. That is where it's at. And then if you really, you have to change that like, kind of, you have to really think about it, uh, but it becomes part of how, how you just play eventually. Elir, I'm sorry, man. I know I, I just, just destroyed your name. Um, I've noticed that your Strat plays perfectly in tune even after Big Whammy dives. How is that possible without a Floyd Rose? Do I need a good expensive strap for such a good tuning stability or is there some kind of secret behind it? To tell you the truth, I don't do a lot of whammy bar stuff on my strat. Um, my strat is set up, the bridge is set up against the body. So I can't pull it back so it's not floating, it's kind of down. Um, and I actually don't use it a lot. If I do it and I go crazy with it and pull it out of tune, 
half the time we stop the video and I read to <laughs> and do it again. So it doesn't. It's just there's no secret to it. If you have a well set up guitar and you do a lot of whammy stuff, it kind of wears the grooves in, and but I, and, and your guitar can get used to it. Your strings can get used to it. I don't do it enough. Um, so uh, yeah, it's 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 probably clever video editing. Sequin ask, why don't you grow a beard? <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, it's, they look incredibly uncomfortable. And second of all, I have about the same amount of testosterone as a 12-year-old girl. Elena says, Hi, Carl. I really like how your guitar sounds. What amp do you use? I don't use any amps. I haven't used amps for any live work or these videos in uh, for like 10 years. I use modeling. Uh, right now, I'm using a, it's right here, my foot. It's a Pod HD 500X for all the videos. Um, it allows me to plug straight in get any tone I want and uh, go right into the computer. So we got a nice clean recording without a lot of noise. Um, and it, I can get pretty much dial in any sound I want out of it. So I've used everything from fractal audio, the rural expensive models to the, but they all sound great. And they, and they really, they beat the hell out of having one even really, really good amp. Um, it's just, I, I don't think I'd ever go back. So, and don't let people go, Oh, you shouldn't, you should, you should stick with the classics and stuff like that. You don't know how many times I've told people I've gone, man, you got just amazing tone. It's just, how do you get your tone? And I go, uh, you know, literally people go, this is the greatest tone I've ever heard. How are you doing that? And I'm like, oh, it's a Line 6 Pod HD processor, $500 item. And they're like, oh, I thought it sounded kind of thin. I mean, that's literally, people just can't get past it, but they sound great. You can do anything you want with them. So that's what I recommend getting. Nick. What string gauges do you use and why, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of, um, related to string gauges? On my Strat, I use nines. I used to use tens until this past summer, but I think I'm getting too old, so I just decided to quit fighting it. It's got a kind of a tight feel and natural anyway. Um, all my other electrics I use tens on, but the Strat, I went back to nines because it's just, so it really depends on how tight, the, if you like the feel of the guitar, um, um, fine, keep the string gauge, but if not, um, you just, I have to adjust it. So it depends on the guitar because some guitars have a longer scale length or just a tighter feel than the others. Um, the, the advantages and disadvantages, um, especially when it comes to thicker strings and people trying to do like the SR, or so the Steve Ray Vaughan route and stuff, um, that could make some sense if you have a rig exactly like his, where it's he's really kind of a, a, a really hard driven clean tone. But for like distortion and metal and all that stuff, that stuff is so covered up. Um, and actually, I think the thicker the strings sound worse because I've tried it like when you're doing the six string and really tuned down, it's really hard to make them sound good. Um, so really, the, the pickups, I think, and the, the, string, and the pickups and the effects and the amp have a lot bigger impact than the actual strings. Brady asks, what is your process when learning a new song and how do you pick out every note? fast. Uh, most of the songs we do, I'm very familiar with the artist anyway. Like if we do a Metallica, I just know how they put things together. If it's a very fast part, I usually throw it in uh, Transcribe, which is um, software by a company called Seventh String. It's like 35 bucks. And it allow me to slow the section down and listen to the notes slower. I can loop it until I get it down. But yeah, all that, all that stuff, it's just impossible to hear unless you slow it down. Michael asked, who do you feel are some of the most important players to have come out of the 80s hard rock and metal era and which ones are the most difficult to cover? Um, Randy Rhodes, very important. You know, obviously like Steve I for me. Um, you know, people like, I know he's probably got more popular in the, in the 90s, but Dimebag Daryl, I guess he got his first really kind of coming up, coming out thing in the 80s. And uh, he's probably got the mo hardest style to emulate almost one part because it's so um first of all their tuning is is so odd that you kind of get your guitar like in a halfway tuning every time and it's just a pain but um his style is just so loose and he's like Eddie van halen uh just on crack he's just it's just insane he's got so much power to his playing and to really give it justice, you got to do it justice. You got to know it well and just feel it. So that's probably the hardest guy to, uh, for me at least to emulate. Nail asks, that might be Neil. I don't know. Do I need to know music theory to learn songs by ear without tab? Um, first of all, any theory you can learn is great. 
the greatest the thing that you can do with your ear is great but i would say a lot of these songs especially popular music songs they come just from experience by playing that style so yes you could figure you don't need a great music theory knowledge the great players like eddie van halen says i don't know any theory or whatever he learned by just listening and picking stuff up and just kind of figuring it out but if you learn enough songs you start seeing how your favorite artists put things together and then when you hear something else by them newer thing you can, they're still doing the same using the same materials and so putting things together really comes from a knowledge of the music style playing a lot of that music Scott, how long have you been playing guitar, and what songs were your biggest inspirations? I started guitar around the age of 10. I'm now 41, so that's about 31 years. And my biggest inspiration uh, song back then to, uh, um, was uh, Steve Eyes for the Love of God. Uh, that one still to this day is probably the most amazing thing in the world. Jason asked, about a year ago, I bought a decent Yamaha six-string. Playing has gotten dramatically better. However, I understand very little of music theory. I would consider myself an advanced be to beginner to an intermediate player. Should I be more focused on nuts and bolts or just keep doing what I'm doing? Uh, you should always be growing as a player, but you should also not do something that's going to keep you from practicing. So if you dread practicing theory and it's going to keep you from actually playing the guitar, don't practice theory. Don't, 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 don't wait until there's a time in your life that you actually have a strong interest in it. And then there would be no question. It's just going to be something you want to do. Um, so don't make yourself do something that you don't think is interesting because at one point in your life you probably will and you'll have plenty of time to learn it then. How many bands have I been in? Are you currently in one and what genres do they play? I did a bunch of metal bands when I was a teenager. I uh, came out in here in, like an, in the LA area for, in like a hard rock band and I've been in and out of bands. I'm not a good band person. I don't, I don't function well in them. I don't know. So I haven't been in a band in a while. I was in a tough I did. Uh, I was in the Vegas Rock Experience uh, in in Vegas for a while, and those had great guys finally to be in a band with. Um, but um, we got burned out still. So I just don't. I don't do well in bands. <laughs> How can I figure out more complex strumming patterns? This is by Ian. More complex strumming patterns. Sometimes I get frustrated because I know the chords. So it's not the case of not knowing the song. It's just I can't. I struggle with the strumming. The strumming. Now I have videos on strumming. So. And what I think is it's mostly something that is over taught and over thought. I think the player, you, people get wrapped up and down, up, up, down, down. Now, it, it's something that you have to feel. If you don't feel it, it doesn't matter if you know the pattern. You're still going to sound horrible with it. So it is, like you said, you, you understand like eighth notes and sixteenth notes and the, how they work and stuff like that. That is that when you're hearing strumming styles, most of them are kind of just, they're not very consistent anyway. It's just a style. It's, a, it's an eight note rhythm or 16th note rhythm. It should be something you feel just like if I was like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then I asked you to clap that you can, well, hopefully you can. And, but, and then just taking that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, feeling it on the guitar instead of clapping it. It's the exact same concept. And if you can't, you want to just kind of not overcomplicate it because that's basically what strumming style is. You're using your arm as a metronome. So, uh, but check out my strumming videos. Hopefully you'll, you'll figure it out. Ronnie asks, I have a cheap Strat. What pickups are best for the money without the price of another guitar? Trying for a metal sound. I have, I put uh, DiMaggio Fast Track 2 in my bridge of the Strat, a DiMaggio Fast Track 1 in the middle and a DiMaggio Chopper in the bridge. Um, but if you have a guitar, cheap guitar, those things together plus the installation will probably cost more than a cheap guitar. But um, so there's not really, I mean, pickups, good pickups cost, you know, you know, usually about 80 bucks each. Then you have to have them installed. So, you know, um, it's really kind of no way out of that. Tommy asked, what's the best way to practice and improve as a beginner? Is it better to focus on technical exercises or learning new songs? Kind of like the previous questions, um, whatever makes you happy. If you, uh, hopefully a little bit of both, but if you like just learning songs for now, as a beginner, that's fine. You need to get something under your, your belt before you start trying to you know, become a virtuoso. So uh, whatever excites you to pick up a guitar, do that. David, hello. Do uh, he says, do you like Gibson Les Pauls? I think they sound great. Personally, I'm not used to the feel of them because of the scale length. 
um, and the 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 body style. I'm just I just grew up playing a strat, so um, I like that string tension and I like the how it's actually contoured to your body, um, so it's more comfortable and I like it's balanced better for weight if it's just sitting on your leg. But they can sound great and people love them, but I just don't own one for that reason. Zach asked, what is your favorite album of all time? Um, maybe Steve Eyes, Passion and Warfare or uh, something, uh, any of the Sigurdos albums. Isaiah, I think I'm ready for an intermediate guitar, preferably used around 500, maybe a little higher. I'm looking for a Floyd Rose style tremolo and stuff. So I guess you're asking what model. For if you like the the metal stuff and the raw hard rock stuff, if you're gonna get like a used 500, you can get a solid guitar. My favorite companies um, that I've used so far really has been like companies like Ibanez. You can get a good guitar, um, used guitar there, and that price point um, that does the metal really well and hard rock. You, you also have companies like uh, ESP. ESP they they got some really good quality for the, for the money there. So. Um, but really any company they make good stuff these days. I mean, it's 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 a remarkable how quality the guitars are these days Cole asked what is your favorite Guns N' Roses song to play and listen to that would be estranged definitely Jack asks, yo Carl love the videos I think this might be asking a lot, but do you plan on doing any Yngwie Malmsteen guitar lessons? What's funny is Yngwie Malmsteen is probably the player when I was 18 years old I knew his style better than anybody's I played tons of Yngwie um, there was issues, I, a lot of people got their stuff taken down off YouTube a long time ago for posting up on, uh, stuff like his, of his on YouTube. So I kind of stayed away from it. It's the same reason why I don't do prints. Um, but I think um, he has relaxed those restrictions. I'm not sure. I see a lot of performance stuff on his and lessons on his stuff. So I may be doing some stuff of his soon. Nolgan, what is your favorite guitar model? That'd be the Fender Strat. Lokanoth. Wow. Uh, currently, I'm learning Steve Eyes for the love of God. Yeah. My guitar does not sustain as long as yours, even though I have humbucking pickups. Do you have a specific pedal? Uh, that video was done about I, I don't know, it's about five or six years ago, and that was um, that was actually a kind of a fluke. I was using a pod as well, so that that was a pod um, one of the earlier versions of the pedal that I have right now, X3 Live, I think, and. Uh, uh, I was sitting in a room that had the studio monitors coming back at me shooting that thing and I just got in the right spot in the room and it just I'd hit a note and it would just go take off it would just feed back forever so um, that was really fun to play with especially it just happened for when I needed a song that really did that it did it so uh, I just got lucky but it's it, you know you get a lot of uh, compression on there and a lot of gain and obviously um, you know, delays, reverbs, it's gonna make it sound that very um, sustaining sound to it. Um, ads, I don't know if I got all of the name here. Um, he asked, is there a listing or inventory of your lesson plan? I'm interested, would like to become a more knowledgeable guitar player. What would you, what would I be learning with you? There is, if you go to the premium sec, go to my website, look in the premium section, all my guitar courses are in there and this year I'm going to be adding a ton of guitar courses from improvisation to ear training and all that stuff. Um, and every, you can see the syllabus of all the courses. You don't have to be a, a premium member. You can see what all the lessons are going to be and how they order they come. Um, you know, if you try to click on it, you couldn't watch it, but you can see everything, what I'm doing there. Brant asked, Carl, what drew me to your lessons was the musicality that you show when you play. Thank you. You are making the notes sing. What should my practice sessions be like to improve my musical interpretation of finger style? I want to practice in one to two hour sessions per day. Uh, musicality, I think, comes from hearing a lot of the music. Obviously, you can sit there and you can learn scales. You can do play song. Listening to other players a lot, it just kind of gets into your, you, you, you get, you gotta be very familiar with what you're physically playing, but listening and emulating other players that's how you develop that kind of musicality about it. And, and then when you can, if you can emulate, you gotta be able to emulate somebody else to be able to do what's in your head. So if you can't listen to a guy and emulate his vibrato, um, then you're not going to be able to, when you hear that same thing, something in your head, you're not gonna be able to realize that idea. So listen a lot, listen to them and then listen to yourself. Uh, a lot of times we get focused on just 
our fingers and we don't actually use our ears. And this is a hearing art. So the more you listen, the more musical you'll be. Just make sure every note you play is something that you would actually want to hear yourself, somebody else do. I, Adriano, um, do you always like the songs you teach? If you had to choose, what would be your favorite genre of music in some examples? I don't like all the songs I teach. Uh, <laughs> nope. Um, it's just, um, oh, we had, I had another question, it's like, do you remember all the songs you teach? I don't even remember the song I just filmed an hour ago. So it's literally, I gotta save room for the next one. Uh, but no, I don't, you know, that'd be impossible. I just work off of requests and popularity, but you know, there's, you know, thousands of song lessons up there. So obviously there's some that I really like a lot and my favorites to, to play are like, not to transcribe because it takes a while, but like stuff like Metallica, that's really fun or those deep. You know, the, the funner songs like that are, are really fun to play. Um, but um, yeah, they're always also very long lessons, so it's a big day for me. Uh, Steven asked, if you had, could have the skills of one guitar player alive or dead, who would it be? It would depend on the style. Like if it was alive, uh, like a classical guitarist, I'd probably pick like uh, David Russell or maybe Jason Bio. Um, if it or Scott Tennant. Um, and or if it was... Uh, a metal guitar player, uh, probably, probably Dimebag. Um, and if it was a rock guitar player, man, there's a lot of good guys out there. I, I would say maybe if you could combine uh, David Gilmore, Eric Johnson, and Steve I, that would be good. Um, so if it was like a like an improviser or like Joe Pass, like chord melody stuff, or like those a jazz guy, be like uh, Ted Green, you know, just some just amazing stuff. And last question, Tristan, hey Carl, does it really matter if you use altered picking or economy picking for a song that you use? Can you use your own picking style or is that a bad, bad idea? If you can play something perfectly, but in your own style of picking, is that considered bad because you're not using good technique? Um, it would depend really if, if you think that it can't sound any better then you're using the perfect technique to play it. I mean, you got people like Eddie Van Halen has a very unique picking style. He holds the pick between his thumb and middle finger, and you know it's, it makes things kind of uh, it'll be extremely awkward for me. But it you know it works for him. And so we have players. We all play differently. But if you find something that's comfortable and it sounds great to you, then that's the way you should be doing it. But obviously develop and, and learn this, the proper techniques as well too and try to develop and you might go to the traditional way of playing it eventually and think that is actually better in the long run or you might just keep your old style as well. All right, so that's it for the questions. I appreciate it. I'm gonna be doing this a lot. Um, make sure if you want me to answer your question, it's gotta come through my website to the Ask Carl link and um, uh, I'll get to as many of them as I can. I'll see you guys again soon.